Be love, spread love is more than a catchphrase. It's a way of life. Speaking truth to power. I'm Maya by name, and I'm making love mainstream. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the podcast. How is your heart today? Oh, you guys, don't mind me. I'm a little bit nasally, <laughs> a little bit more nose than usual. <laughs> I uh, got a cold a couple of days ago. Still kind of feeling under the weather, but I wanted to make this episode. I thought it would be really fun to share a mindset that has served me well for some time. So a little backstory. I used to be an extremely anxious decision maker. And I still get some anxiety around bigger decisions in my life, but I definitely have a more grounded foundation now with tuning into my intuition. But I preface this with that because this mindset hack, if you will, has helped me a lot with saying yes or no and not feeling like I need to over explain or apologize for those decisions. So for some, I know this might be a little scary, kind of morbid thought, but we're going to think about death. (laughs) And no, we're not really talking about death in its traditional coffin-like sense. I'm more so referring to a figurative death or a soul death, an energy or joy death. So some examples of what can cause this kind of death are things that don't serve you period. (laughs) Places, spaces, or relationships where you are unappreciated. Any decisions that place you far, far away from your heart center. Anything that pulls you in a negative direction or makes you act out of character or out of integrity with who you are. Anything that drains your energy, that empties your cup and doesn't offer a refill. (laughs) Anything that you simply do not like. All of these I would consider contributing factors to death, and I would stay away from those. (laughs) Now, if you're looking at it in its traditional sense, this would also include anything that endangers your physical health and well-being. Also, steer clear of those as much as possible. Now, I look at things as life and death because it's either bringing more life and love or it's contributing to death. It's very simple, and it's something that I didn't realize would make decisions far easier and life much less stressful. Now, a lot of people use a similar strategy when they say, for example, it's either an F yes or it's a no. And I love that one too. It's a great way to be reminded and aware of your intuitive nudges. But some people find that even that's not enough, right? And they still struggle with people-pleasing tendencies anxiety around decision making and standing firm in their responses and ultimately just living life unapologetically right we weren't conditioned to not give a shit and just live our best lives we were taught to analyze our actions and make sure that we weren't burning a bridge by saying no or missing out on an opportunity even if it didn't land with us or to not care what anyone else thinks Conditioning says perception is everything. We should seek advice rather than counsel within. And if someone doesn't like you, you should probably try harder to appease them. (laughs) So living from this viewpoint of life or death can be difficult. But let me tell you, it is so rewarding and time-saving and heart-saving and mental health-saving because here's the thing. When you only focus on things that are life-saving, Granted, of course, we all have to do things sometimes that make us feel like we're dying a slow death. (laughs) That is the irony of life, right? But when you have a choice and you make a choice that is beneficial to you, you claim your joy and your happiness and your pleasure and your life, okay? And the things that do not align with the best of you They'll fall off and die. They'll leave you. You will not have room in your space for anything that is not breathing life into you. And again, I have to say this. Sometimes this is not the case, right? There are plenty of instances where I have felt dislike for things that I've had to do. 
and in work, career, relationships, family. Yeah, sometimes we have to do things maybe for others that don't necessarily always benefit us directly. But for the most part, even in those instances, our life force is being sustained because who we keep around us is also a choice. And so those people are a reflection of us. And I'm talking adults here, obviously as a child, you can't pick your family. But these people, they do reflect energy back to us that we can hold space for. And if the energy is not beneficial, then you know what to do because that means that they are causing death to some aspect of you. So I just want you to think about this. Even if you choose not to live this way, that's fine. (laughs) But thinking about it might help you to see what is currently in your life that is either beneficial or not. And if it's not, you can make the decision to either keep it or let it go. And you base that decision upon its importance, upon how it makes you feel, how it gives you life or drains it out of you, how it fills your heart or empties the space, and whether or not it feels worth it to you. Look, I don't know if you know this, but your life is one ginormous executive decision, (laughs) okay? You make the calls, you make the cuts. No one else has to live in your shoes or spend the next however many years you got left as you, but you. So don't be afraid to take on this mindset and make it work for you. Does that person, place, or thing or that experience sustain you or burn you out? Think about it, love. Thank you so much for joining me in this space. I hope you have an amazing day. And as always, be love and spread love.